I'm Stefan Papadakis, and today we're going to tear down this transmission. This is a NASCAR transmission um, built by GeForce Transmissions. It's basically the same thing that most of the NASCAR teams use. There's really only a couple of different transmissions that they run in NASCAR because the, the rules are so strict. And they're made by GeForce, Andrews, uh, Extract. Those are a few of the transmission manufacturers. You know, you'd like to think that like maybe the Ford or the GM would make the transmissions, but they're actually from specific uh, race car transmission companies. So now without further ado, let's get into the transmission. So the power input comes from this end. This was what they call the input shaft. It turns clockwise. And the other side of the transmission is the output shaft. We have this little plug here that you know, when we have the transmission out of the car, you put that in and it doesn't allow the oil to come out of it. This is a drive shaft that we use, carbon fiber drive shaft. Just want to show you exactly where you know, that basically inserts into the back of the transmission. So let's start by removing the oil from the transmission. Go to a trusty toolbox, pop this lower bolt out. So as you can see, the oil is a little bit dirty. The transmission has been run before, and what happens is as, as it runs, it gets like tiny little metal particles on this little magnet. There's actually a magnet inside this bolt. So you go ahead and clean that magnet, set it aside, and then we'll pull off the shifter. This is what they call a top shifter style. So the shifter input and everything is on the top. Like the older NASCAR transmissions, everything was on the side with like levers and stuff like that. They were basically like a evolution of an old Muncie transmission. But when they went to the cars of tomorrow, so for safety, they moved the drives a little bit towards the center of the car and that gave them a little bit more impact protection on the left side, but they needed some room to do that. So they moved this transmission shifting mechanism from the side of the transmission to the top. Go ahead, pop the rest of this transmission top off, and then you can see all of the shifting mechanism. So the shifter turns this rod, right? And depending on how you're shifting, you'll either get first gear, then it slides over to second, and then this other mechanism over here that goes to third gear, and then to fourth. And if you look closely, you'll see that these are straight cut gears. So they're louder than your streetcar gear, but they're much stronger. So this is the reverse detent spring and ball that we're going to get to so use a little pick to oh, drop that it's okay i know where it went we'll get that later next we've got the detent ball so what this does is like when you go into reverse it goes into this little notch and it kind of like gets that you know that feeling when you shift into a gear and it kind of notches in so that's what the detent does so we have that whole reverse mechanism apart and now we'll pull the tail shaft off tail shaft now exposes the reverse gears. So when the reverse is activated, it basically engages these extra gears on the backside here. It engages one extra gear, so it turns in reverse. So now we'll pop what they call the cluster out. So first through fourth gear in a whole assembly called the cluster will now come out and, and then we can start pulling the individual gears apart. Uh, this transmission is an aluminum case. They also make these in magnesium case, which is a little bit lighter. Uh, for, but for the application that we use on our drifting cars, uh, we feel that the aluminum is a little bit more robust and just seems to last a little bit longer before getting worn out. So this is the whole cluster. And you can see the, the gear that fell off right there is what they call the drop gear. Oh, there's a spring. All right, so that's the spring we dropped. So we'll go ahead and set that aside with our little buddies over there, all right, our detent friends and the rest of the bolts. So here's the inside of the case. You can see a couple bearings there. So I'll go ahead and mark the shafts with a Sharpie so you can see it turn and we'll talk about how the transmission actually shifts gears and how it works. So the way this works is the power comes in here. This is called the input shaft. This is actually not connected to the output shaft here. If you look, they're actually not connected inside here. Input shaft comes through here. The power goes to this drop gear to the counter shaft. After the counter shaft is either going to come up through first gear, back over, notice the ratio, second gear, or third gear. When you go to fourth gear, what happens is it actually just links the input shaft and the output shaft together and they spin the same speed. So these transmissions, fourth gear is always one to one. The reason why they do that is the most efficient. It's actually not going through the gears. The ones down here are just along for the ride, but they're not actually creating much friction at all. And you can actually see how it shifts. Let's go ahead and shift it. Watch the black lines. If right now we're in neutral. First gear is not engaged, second gear is not engaged, third gear is not engaged. So, right, this is neutral. 
So when we turn it, the engine can turn, but it doesn't turn the output, it's not linked. And then when we go to first gear, so that's those sliders will slide over, engage these what they call dogs, and boom, we're in first gear. Now look at the speed, how much faster the input shaft is versus the output shaft. Then we'll shift to second, third, you know how you have to kind of go through neutral. So this is third right there, and then fourth. Reverse happens on this side, uh, where we had the, the reverse idler gear and these two. This is where reverse gets selected, and it adds that extra gear. So instead of the transmission be going down and then back up and you end up going the same direction, it goes down through a third gear and into this fourth gear, and it'll actually turn opposite direction. So let's go ahead and start pulling the actual cluster apart. So this is what they call the drop gear. So this drop gear, essentially, you can change different ratios here, um, but it's just pretty straightforward. It's an overall ratio change. Instead of changing individuals, if you wanna change them all, except for fourth, you can change that drop gear. We'll pull off the dog with the slider, and then we've got this, what they call the uh, slider hub. So the thrust bearings, and this would be the dog face. And these are cool because you can actually replace the dog. So when these get worn out a little bit, you can replace just the dog and not have to replace the whole gear and everything. That is third gear right there. And you can see, like at this point, we can already start changing gear ratios if we wanted to. This is called the handcuff. And this is actually is really cool because with all of the power that goes through these transmissions, it wants to sort of spread apart the gears, and this holds the shafts together and makes them stronger by not allowing, believe it or not, like these really thick shafts can actually flex a little bit, and the handcuff will actually hold them together really well. So now we'll pull off second gear, a couple of shim washers, another face, here's another dog face, and you can see how this inserts. It has this like spline on it, and it engages onto the gear, and other transmissions, these are incorporated like together, the dogs and the gears, uh, but these are separate. All right, so thanks for joining. Whoa. There's another part that goes inside here. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Um, if you like this and want to see more, uh, hit the like button or uh, consider subscribing. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.